we're going to wrap up this Borderline of Sanity series with one more task, one more skill to look at, one more connection to make. Now, we first, when we first looked at this, we were using just pictures to try to find patterns. All right. As, a, as, as we looked at different shapes, how was their number in a sequence related to the, the number of triangles or the number of squares around their border? And then we moved on to a more systematic approach, building these tables of values and looking to see what are we counting by. All right, in this case, in the most recent case, we were counting by 18s, and we should have come up with that purple formula there. 18 times the pattern number minus 6 gave us how many triangles are on the border of any figure within that sequence. All right. Now we didn't look yet at the graph on the on the right, but you already know that you can take a table and make a graph. We did mention the word linear uh, a few times throughout the series. All of the sequences that we were looking at were linear sequences, meaning that when we graph their growth on a coordinate plane, they form straight lines. Okay. We're going to look at the, the, two of the, the two of those situations. So the most recent, uh, the most recent pattern and the triangle pattern. We're going to look at them in one more way, one more method. Rather than building a table, you can actually figure out, as long as the situation is linear, you can figure out an equation for that situation if you have just two points. All right, we're going to take this idea one step farther. Borderline insanity, last phase. Take a look at borderline insanity number two. I've taken some elements out of the table. We're left with just two points, okay? At a side length of four, there's 15 borderline squares. At a side length of eight, there's 39 borderline squares. Now, if you have a linear pattern, and it must be a linear pattern, two points is sufficient to create a line and to get an equation for that line. All right, we can find a slope. All right, this is a jump slope. So slightly different, we're not going up one on the x-axis, we're going up four in the x direction, okay? So when we go in the y direction, 15 plus 15 is 30 plus another nine is 39, okay? So when we make a jump of four in the x direction, we're making a jump of 24 in the y direction, that means my slope or my rate of change is going to be 24 over 4, all right, or 6. Now, we already knew this. Again, this is kind of review, but knowing that my rate of change is 6 means that for each 1 that x increases, y will increase by 6, and I can start writing a formula 6 times x equals y, okay? Now, that's not the finish of the formula because there's another adjustment that's going to need to be made. How do we find that adjustment? Use one of these points, either one of these points with that formula to make the adjustment. So, when x is 4, so 6 times 4, when x is 4, y is 15, okay? Now, Right now, that equation is untrue. 6 times 4 is not 15. The question is, what adjustment do I need to make so that the equation will be true? And that adjustment will be this. Subtract 9. 24 minus 9 is 15. Since that's the adjustment that needs to be made there, it's the adjustment I'll make here. And this is an equation for that situation, that borderline situation using just two points.
okay? Y equals 6x minus 9. You should recognize uh, from the last video. Let's look at another example. Looking at our example from Borderline Insanity 3, this one here, hopefully you figured out a formula for it. If you didn't, we're going to use our new strategy to come up with a formula right now. So we've got two points of reference. All right, figure number one has 12 borderline triangles. Figure number four had 66 borderline triangles. Get from one to four, we add three. To get from 12 to 66, we add 54. Okay? Dividing those two, 54 divided by three. It's going to give me the slope of 18. Okay, that means for each one that X increases, Y increases by 18. Or you could see it graphically here. If I move forward one, all right, from one to two, 12 plus 18 up to 30, right? Each one increase in X results in a 18 increase in y, which means my formula for this pattern is going to start y equals 18x, and then some adjustment. All right, to find that adjustment, we could use either point. Let's, let's use this 4 and this 66. So we have when x is 4, 18 times 4, y is 66. When x is 4, y is 66. What kind of adjustment do I need to make to make this situation true? 18 times 4 is 72. I'm going to need to subtract 6 from this to make that situation true, all right? 72 minus 6 is 66, so that is what I will need to subtract here, and that will be my formula for this situation. Y equals 18 times X minus 6. If I wanted to double check, I could look with any of the other points from last time. I, look, I could look with this point, 18 times 1 is 18, minus 6 is 12, okay, this formula will generate all of the borderline totals, given a figure number for borderline insanity 3. All right, so borderline insanity 4 is what you're looking at now. I'm going to give you a few different situations. They will all be linear situations. I'm just going to give you two elements from the pattern, and the question is, can you generate a formula for that pattern from just two elements.